In this video, we'll discuss how to create and work with motion paths in TimeFlow. A motion path may be created on any object by first adding it to the TimeFlow view and then right clicking to show the context menu. Select Add Animation, Motion Path, New Motion Path. Only one motion path may be added per object. It is also recommended to avoid adding any other channels or behaviors on the same object which directly set the position to avoid conflicts. Once created, the path position channel is shown with keyframes corresponding to the path curve shown in the scene view. These keyframes also control the velocity of the curve when viewed in the graph. By default, a simple motion path is created with two keyframes starting at the current time and position of the object. This is just a starting point for you to begin creating your own path. New keyframes may be inserted by holding the control key and clicking at any position in the graph or track view. You'll notice that whenever adding or moving keyframes, that the velocity curve in the graph view dynamically adjusts. This is because the curve is presenting the relative change in velocity from one keyframe to the next. Velocity is always displayed in positive values moving forward, so it has an upward trend in the graph. Whenever dragging a keyframe in the view, it moves diagonally since the velocity must increase as the time decreases and vice versa. This is simply the method by which the curve seeks equilibrium, since getting from point A to point B in a specified time has a precise mathematical solution. Anytime the Bezier handles are positioned in such a way that makes the movement impossible, the graph collapses to a flat line, meaning no movement is occurring at those times, and the object is held in position until the curve continues upward again. It is worth noting that these limitations can be overcome using place on path to animate objects forward and backwards on motion paths with full control over speed in either direction. This will be covered in a later video. And while we're on the subject of velocity, another setting available in the tools and options section in the inspector is the velocity channel. When enabled, this displays the output velocity as a channel in the time flow view. This channel outputs the current velocity of the object in world units, either as a vector or a unified speed or you can output the path interpolation ranging from 0 to 1 over the length of the path. Whichever mode is used, this is a read-only channel which may be used as reference or to link with other channels. Additional keyframe and path editing tools are displayed in the scene view whenever the motion path object is selected. A series of buttons and menus are displayed at the top of the scene and each of the path nodes can be selected and manipulated by clicking on them. The built-in move and rotate tools may be used on each of the nodes, and you can select multiple nodes at once by holding the shift key. Note that normal object selection is still allowed in the scene view, so clicking on another object or an empty space will deselect the current object, causing the motion path controls to go away. If this happens, just reselect the object to display it again. If you wish a motion path to continually display in the view regardless of selection, enable the Stay Visible checkbox in the tools and options located in the motion path inspector. When this is enabled, the path is still drawn even when the object is not selected. However, the path editing tools are still only displayed for the currently selected object. To add a new keyframe, we can move the time to the desired position and then click Add Key. This inserts and selects the new keyframe with the selection corresponding to the time flow view. However, sometimes after adding a new keyframe, you may notice that the path has kinks in it. This can be resolved by editing the velocity curve in the graph view and if necessary, sliding keyframes in time to create a smoother velocity overall. Notice that whenever a keyframe is selected in the time flow view, it is also selected in the scene view and vice versa, making it easy to go between views while working. And similar to working in time flow, you may double click a keyframe to select it and jump to its time. If the node section is expanded in the inspector, selecting keyframes in the scene view also opens the details for the selected keyframes outlining each in the channel's color. This makes it easier to work with keyframes to inspect or enter specific values. From the select menu, we can select all keyframes or use the keyboard shortcut Control A when the scene view has focus. To clear the selection, we can select none. And there is also the ability to select the first or last node in the path. When a node is selected, the forward and backward arrows may be used to step through the keyframes or you may use the keyboard shortcuts Shift Page Up and Shift Page Down. Selected keyframes may be assigned various tangent modes listed in the following menu under Tangents. For example, we can select Auto Calculate to create keyframe tangents that automatically adjust and bend with the path. 
Similar to the time flow view, tangents are drawn in blue whenever auto calculate is enabled and can be manually adjusted at any point to disable the auto calculate mode. We also have the options to break and unify tangents. as well as the ability to show and hide tangents. It may be useful to hide tangents for some or all of the keyframes while you're working to avoid modifying them. Next, we have Collapse and Expand, which can be used to collapse tangents down to a point or reset them. When multiple keyframes are selected, the Move tool may be used to move them all at once. However, the Rotate tool and Editing Tangents only work on one keyframe at a time even if multiple are selected. Next, we have the Refresh button, which recalculates the path curve. This can be useful whenever you have any auto-calculate tangents. Each time the path is refreshed, the auto-calculation is further refined. And finally, we have the Delete button to remove any selected nodes. You may also use the keyboard shortcut Backspace or the Delete key to remove selected nodes in the scene view. Next, we'll go over some of the additional features in the Motion Path Inspector. Motion paths may either be open-ended or a closed loop by enabling closed path. It's important to note that when closed path is enabled, that the first and last keyframes in the path become unified. Therefore, it is recommended that you first create the path in the approximate shape desired before enabling the closed path option. Of course, at any point, you may also turn this off to once again edit the first and last keyframes independently. Next, we have the rotation mode, which allows three options for managing the object's rotation. If none is selected, the motion path has no effect on the object rotation and is the option you should use if you wish to animate the rotation separately. For example, in some cases it may be easier to animate an object by adding the rotation as a separate keyframe channel. Another option is to use Look Ahead. This is a built-in auto-rotate feature that automatically aligns the object to the path by having it face forward to a point along the path at a relative time ahead. The look ahead time may be adjusted to determine how much the object anticipates the path curving ahead. You may also choose to expose the look target, which makes the object visible in the hierarchy view to be referenced by other scripts or behaviors. And the last rotation mode is interpolate. This interpolates the rotation set by each keyframe node along the path. Rotation for each node may be modified in the scene view using the rotate tool, or you may twirl open the nodes panel to directly edit the rotation value of each. While we're looking at the nodes section, another option here is to enable exposed nodes. This reveals each of the keyframe nodes as game objects in the hierarchy view. These objects are managed by the motion path and should not be renamed or moved, but revealing them in the hierarchy allows for direct editing and makes it easier to link the node transforms with other behaviors and channels. At any time, you can hide the nodes again from the hierarchy by unchecking exposed nodes. The node objects are still on the scene, but simply hidden from the hierarchy view. Back in the interpolation section, there are a few more features to cover. With either look ahead or interpolate rotation modes, the orientation may be used to further adjust the rotation of the object. The orientation could also be animated to add additional rotation relative to the path. The auto tangent ratio affects all keyframes set to auto calculate and may be adjusted to control the Bezier tangent lengths for auto calculate keyframes. It's helpful to select the keyframes in the scene view to see what's happening. A lower tangent ratio causes the keyframes to act more like corners, whereas a higher value results in keyframes flattening out. This setting works in conjunction with each node's weight value, which may be set in the node section under more details. When you're no longer working on keyframes, you can lock and collapse the node section. Another option we have is to enable position smoothing. This smooths the movement over the motion path by a certain amount of time in seconds, having an overall dampening effect. Similarly, this may also be applied to the rotation. Note that whenever using smoothing, it is only calculated when playing the animation and does not produce reliable results when jumping in time. To see the effects of smoothing, simply let the animation play. Before we wrap up, a few more features can be found in the Tools and Options area. Here you may change the color of the path as it is displayed in the scene view, set whether the path remains visible when the object is not selected, and an option to disable editing. Once you are finished working on a motion path, you may want to turn off editing to prevent unintentional modification. Next, we have the ability to expose the rotation channel. 
This adds the path rotation channel to the time flow view, which outputs a read-only value calculated by either the look-at mode or the interpolation mode. This can be useful to link the rotation with other objects and channels. To help visualize a path in 3D space, you may enable the bounding frames feature. By default, this draws rectangles along the path oriented by the path rotation. This is a helpful tool to see clearly how a path is twisting and turning. The spacing may be based on the velocity over the curve or using regular intervals. And the bounding frames may be isolated to a specific portion of the path using the start and end sliders. Note that the bounding frames are only displayed in the scene view and are not visible in the game view. However, this feature includes the ability to generate objects along the path with a prefab. This can be used for motion graphics, creating tunnels, or simply to visualize the motion during the creative process. When a prefab is assigned, it is previewed in the scene view only and is not visible in the camera until objects are generated. Press Generate Objects to create them as game objects. This creates a new group with generated objects, which you can now manipulate and do with as you please. Note, however, that if you generate a ton of objects, that it will affect performance, so you may want to combine these meshes into a single object or export them to a 3D modeling program for further editing. The last feature we'll cover in this video is the Notify on Setup event. This is an advanced feature and is normally only used for special setups. You may assign a method or action to invoke each time the motion path runs its setup routine. If any other scripts or behaviors perform calculations based on the path or nodes, it can use this setup call to perform those functions at the appropriate time. That concludes this video on motion paths. Please refer to the links in the video description below for further information. Next up, we'll talk about using the blend behavior.